robotic beings rule the world. The humans are dead. The humans are dead. binary strings. It just makes no sense. I know. I hate this subject. When the cycle's finished, I refuse to look at another intergalactic history book ever again. Okay, but the exam's only a few suns away. We need to concentrate. Let's start with the things we do understand. <laughs> Alright. These creatures. Uh, practice saying humans. It's what they call themselves. You'll get more marks. Humans love to organise themselves into boxes. Reductionists. I know. So, these creatures... Humans would sort themselves into nations, ethnicities, cultures, and races. They're basically all the same things. Correction. Technically, human ethnicity and culture often relate to nationhood and are closely intertwined. At the same time, human nations can have many different ethnicities and many different cultures. Race became an inadequate concept to describe the genetic diversity of the human civilization. Confusing. Humans had an implicit need to categorize themselves. Classes, castes, personality types, genders. Didn't they used to think that everyone had to be an A or a B? A's were supposedly the opposites of B's. The book tells us that at birth, A's were dressed in one colour, in case other humans accidentally thought an A was a B. <laughs> Bizarre. These categorizations are very confusing. And when we consider humans' ingestion habits post-1950 in the Western Earth, it all gets really unintelligible. You must be missing something. All the evidence suggests that these were intelligent life forms. Did you not examine the time capsules were assigned in class? Ah, uh, yes, the time capsules. With the television. television. Specifically, reality yeah. television. <laughs> Let me modify. Some of the evidence suggests that these were quite intelligent life forms. These life forms had to ingest certain amounts of biomatter and H2O in order to survive and replicate. Yet it seems they're obsessed with the restriction of this biomatter. Food, they termed it. Picture their genetic material. Quite primitive. <laughs> Depends on who you compare it to. Not all species have triple helixes like us. Their primitive DNA, combined with their food ingestion habits, resulted in a huge range of shapes and sizes that these humans came in. That's what makes it so strange. They needed food. They enjoyed food. Yes. In the absence of being able to body shift or levitate, it was a primary sensory pleasure. Still, it's just mad that they strive to reach a uniform size, constantly consuming less than what their bodies wanted. And so their bodies reacted. Predictable. The human's mind was deprived of food. They became obsessed with it. They found themselves caught in an obsession of cycle. Unable to think of anything but food, food, size and food. That's what makes it so strange. That, you know, these humans put such a lot of weight on the size of their bodies. In the end, the humans blame themselves for their obsession. In some communities, the humans would bring in experts to fix them. These fixers would diagnose them as ill and prescribe them with different sorts of food ingestion programs to remedy their size and shape. They constantly judge each other's bodies as if there was a right way to look. And they promoted ideals of the human body, the perfect product only genetically achievable by a small proportion of them. So I just can't get the logic of their food ingestion patterns. These are supposed to be intelligent creatures, right? Humans! Still, their attitudes towards food and their bodies made no sense. 
How will I explain it to the examiner when I can't even understand it myself? You are looking at this all wrong. Stop thinking about logic or sense. Stop thinking about humans doing things for their health, general well-being, spirituality, or for enjoyment. Think about one thing only, and it will all make sense. Well? Marketing. <laughs> Marketing? The human action of promoting products or services practiced by special humans known as marketeers to gain more of the property commonly known as money. Money? They thought it was quite important, didn't they? So important, it seemed money made the earth go round. Wow. But what's this money thing got to do with their food ingestion programs? As money made the earth go round, the entire civilization wanted more and more of it. Marketing created needs, needs these humans would spend money to meet. Incredible. What made it ingenious was that the need was imaginary. Humans tricked each other that they needed X, Y, and Z, large dwelling places, flavoured H2O, when in reality they didn't. In the case of food and body image, marketeers discovered that the wider the gap between the construct and reality, the more effective the marketing was, even after research proved that food ingestion programs were ineffective, marketeers grew bolder, and these programs kept proliferating. More money was spent on food ingestion programs <laughs> than on human welfare. What was this money stuff like? It must have been irresistible to have all humankind distorting reality to get it. It was originally objects, then bits of paper, then just numbers. Just numbers? Just numbers. Binary, eventually. What a ridiculous thing to organise an entire species around. So this is why they were obsessed with their bodies and what they consumed? Exactly. There was more money to be made when humans were dissatisfied with their bodies than there was in encouraging them to be happy made possible by the marketing of these programs. All sorts of programs. Gym memberships, exercise equipment, food products, control garments, cellulite creams, self-help books, fat burning supplements, muscle building supplements, plastic surgery. They did surgery on plastic? <laughs> no, that's what they called it. The surgical modification of their bodies for the purposes of appearing more like each other. This species is beginning to sound rather emotionally depressing. There were trillions of humans not feeling good about themselves. In marketing unrealistic bodies, marketeers had created the perfect product for sale because no human had or could have one. Yet the entire civilization was being told they could have it if they just tried harder, just sacrificed more. Everybody was encouraged to pick at themselves and at each other to point out the ways in which their unique, genetically diverse bodies were just not good enough. All of them believing that their bodies just weren't good enough. Why, I notice some emotional feelings of sadness. Sad or not, we're now likely to surpass all expectations in this exam. Interesting how everything makes sense once you factor this money thing in. Yes. These humans were not unintelligent. They were just, perhaps... I think the word you're looking for is deceived. De deceived. 